Welcome to Colonial Classics, a food demonstration with the House of the Seven Gables live in the Gables Cafe Kitchen. Tonight, I'm going to walk you all through making a colonial apple tart dessert from the 1594 cookbook, The Good Housewives Handmade for the Kitchen. The House of the Seven Gables strives to be a welcoming, thriving, historic site and community resource that engages people of all backgrounds in our inclusive American story. Continuing this work takes effort, time, and money. We would like to thank our members who are here today, here tonight, and invite you to become a member if you are not. We have some great programs and member events lined up this year. We have included a link for membership in the chat. We have also included a link for donations to help us cover the costs of this demonstration and to support our work as a community resource. Any amount is greatly appreciated. We encourage you to support small businesses in your community whenever you can. We purchased our spice collection, our spice selection from Sale of Spice on Pickering Wharf. I would personally like to thank all the people who have supported this program and got it running safely during COVID-19, especially Julie Arison Bishop, who is here tonight as my support crew. If you have a question or comment at any time during the demonstration, please type it into the chat and it will be read aloud to me. The goal of this demonstration is to connect with everyone. So do not be afraid to engage in the chat either with me or each other. Now, who's ready to get started? Hi, everyone. I also just realized I didn't turn on the oven, which is very important. Don't forget to do that when you're baking. Um, so I'm just going to take a second to put my oven on at 350. Sorry, 370. It's always good to get your numbers right with that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna make apple an apple tart today. And I really wanted to make this recipe because I love apples. Um, so it, it works out really well. And the recipe is pretty easy to understand, um, even in the colonial form. Uh, we've already posted the recipe on Facebook, so you guys can check that out and you'll get a copy of it later on as well. So in order to start, I've already chopped off most of my apples right here. I'm gonna chop off one of them for you guys so you see how small you kind of want to get your apple bits. Um, but in the meantime, I didn't put water in this. We don't have Deb here today, so I'm a little discombobulated. Yes. All right, you want about four tablespoons of water in your butter. So I have that right there and that's going to go be heated up. Got to turn on the right burner. There we go. All right, so I'm going to have that butter melt while I'm cutting up the apple. I decided to go with a yellow delicious because it seemed the most like the apples that they might have had around the colonial um, time in this area. There were some, so what you want is a sweet apple. It's kind of actually pretty, it's sweet and watery, not like sort of a bitter or red delicious. And so you want to cut these up. Let me just show you in a second. And you want them to be nice and small because you're going to cook them up and you want them to be soft, not too soft that they become kind of like a, all right, it's a good size. Yeah, you don't want them to become mush, but you want them to be soft enough that it's not like you're crunching into the actual apple. Any questions so far? I forgot to mention what kind of apples they are. Um, I mentioned the apples, but there were so, I did so much apple research, guys. It's, there's a lot out there about apples, specifically apples in New England. Um, so in New England, we have the New England Apple Archive. And I fell down the rabbit hole into that one, um, constantly looking up different apples, trying to figure out which one was best to use, what's at my grocery store. Um, and just what's gonna be the best for this tart. So common, the apples that they would have had in colonial times was, um, that were native to this area, area was the Roxbury Russet, or um, in Plymouth around the 1600s was 
found, um, discovered, that's how they, they term it, discovered this apple, um, was the Hilltop Sweet. So right in the name, you know it's a sweet apple. So I went looking around to try and find, don't forget to stir your butter, that's very important, um, trying to find an apple that would match the sweetness. So you could do a honey crisp, red delicious, a yellow delicious, there's a couple more in there, the empire or gala. And those ones would work just fine. Get them at your local grocery store. Um, there we go. All right, so our butter is all set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these apples and I'm gonna put them in a pan because we're going to, to cook these in Madeira. And those of you who were here last week, you remember our Madeira. Get those all in there. So Madeira is a fortified wine. This one is mixed with brandy. So it's like a red wine with brandy. And you're just gonna pour that all over. It has a very strong smell and a really nice sort of, it seems summery to me, which is why I chose it for this because it's just, it's very nice. So mix that all up. Make sure your apples are nice and even so they all get coated. And then I'm just gonna let that sit there for a little bit. Just let it soak in. It's not heat. It's not on heat yet. Nope, we're all, it's just gonna soak there because I think it adds more flavor into the apple. I like apples to be extra flavor, but it's yummy. Um, so Madeira comes from the Madeira Islands off the coast of Portugal. And it was very common wine um, in during this time, during the colonial time. Um, and that's why I've decided to use it again, because this is what the Turners would have had the most access to, unlike other wines. So we're going to start while those are soaking, we're going to start on our um, pastry. So hey, gonna, there is a question in the chat. Can you kind of describe or say something about like the smell of Madeira? The smell of Madeira. Can you compare it to everything? Or? Brandy. It smells like brandy. Um, sort of a, a grapey brandy. So it really, yeah, uh, if you don't know brandy, it's alcoholic. It, 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 it smells very alcoholic. Um, and that's about the best I can do it. Very fruity. Um, and it smells stronger than when you taste it. When you first take, when I first tasted it, I was expecting something heavy, uh, but it was actually very light. It was sort of like a sangria, um, which was which very nice. So I hope that answers your question. I do recommend getting it. I, I'm, it's very yummy. They got it. They got it. Okay, good. Cause I could go on trying. Um, so I have my two and a half cups of flour and I'm gonna plop in my tablespoon of sugar in there. And then we're gonna pour in our butter. It's all, so butter and water, plop those in there. And so this is the same pastry that we use for the baked chicken in winter. Um, I decided to use it again because it works with both savory and sweet pies. And we're gonna pour in our egg a little bit at a time. Just get it all mixed in there. So since it works with both, both savory and sweet, it has this nice flaky texture to it, which I really loved the first time I tried it. Uh, I tried other ones, other pastries, and they just didn't work as well. It also makes sense to use the same pastry because that's what people would have been doing around um, the colonial times too. They, if it works, it works. Why, why would you change it? Um, and also since these recipes, most of the time before cookbooks, even during when there's cookbooks, um, these recipes would be passed down um, throughout the, through the family, through orally. They wouldn't have been written down. And again, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Swoosh. And squishy. And so you get that nice Play-Doh-y consistency. Okay. 
actually. So as long as you keep working it, it's going to get to that consistency that you want. Probably because I didn't have my water ready in time. It's been a crazy day, guys. How's everyone else's Wednesday? All right. All right, so we're gonna try and roll this out. See, I mean, I've had a lot of issues with pastry. I don't know why pastry doesn't love me. I really like pastry. Are there any questions so far? Nothing. Nothing? Do they have a roller like that? No. Um, probably wouldn't say this is how I roll on it. Um, uh, they would have had some sort of roller. I, I'm learning lots of new things about in the kitchen. We just, cause we're getting the house ready to open up. We're opening up on Friday. Very exciting. We're working on my tour. Um, and our person, Susan in charge of collections has been putting some new fun stuff in the house. And one of the things is a whisk, but it just looks like it's like it looks like it's about that big and it just it's a bunch of what looks like hay tied together so it's very interesting that's now in the kitchen i don't you grab it <laughs> i can't touch it because i have doughy hands can't do that julie's gonna go grab it great so while she grabs that i'm gonna roll this out um so yeah, there are some things that definitely look like, yeah, I know what that does. And then there's other times where I'm like, why is this here? All right, so I got that rolled out. It's a bit crumbly today, guys. Just plop it in. And one other thing I love about this dough is that if you have holes, just plug it in with other pieces. It's great. It's like nothing ever happened. I, I like to be able to fix things because I do make a lot of mistakes, unfortunately. Okay. Coming in with the whisk. Fixing up some of my holes here. All right. Got it? I do. So that is like a bundle of sage, actually. Um, and so when I first saw it, I'm like, well, why is this in here? But this um, is a reproduction piece, not reproduction a piece. So we can touch it. You guys can't touch it. Um, <laughs> please do not touch things when you come to visit. Uh, all right, so we've got this together. Got that down. Not the prettiest, but you know, it's all right. We do our best. It's all that we can do. All right. So now that I made a complete mess of this station, we're going to go over to the apples. As soon as I'm satisfied with our famous. Yeah. All right. You already tell it's getting flaky. All right, so we're gonna turn on our heat for our apples and we're gonna start that. I actually need to wash my hands a little bit. Did anyone try to make chicken in winter? I don't know where Julie went. Oh, Julie went to go. I'm back. Oh, you're back. I asked if people have tried to make chicken in winter and I didn't know you weren't there, sorry. Your mom, who is uh, gratefully on this call, so that she had the opportunity to have her. Yes, yes. Mom had it quite a few times. Thank you for going through that. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had her try the tart yet. Um, probably going to end up at her house anyways. 
Um, so we're going to come on over here and hopefully I will turn on the right burner this time. There we go. I'm going to put that on like medium, medium high. And then just mix continuously the whole time you're going to want to mix this because um, you don't want any of your apples to be too soft and the other one's not soft enough. So just mix it all up and eventually it's going to start to steam and that's when your apples are also going to start feeling almost rubbery. Um, I know it's a it's a weird idea. You probably usually don't want your food to be rubbery, um, but that way you have sort of a nice soft first bite into it, and then you get a little bit of texture in your apple, which is really nice. Um, keeps sticking on here. Yeah. So yeah, you just keep keep going. Eventually, you'll get there. I, can you see if there's questions in there? I cannot, but I can go and check. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, because right now it's just a good time to chat because not much going on there. You're just waiting, watching a, a pot boil, basically. Can you do this with other fruits if you wanted to? Yes, yes, you can. I thought about doing it with pears. I definitely feel like pears would work. Um, I've also thought of mixing some currants in here at the end product. Because um, <laughs> you just mix mix it up. Um, what other things work? I don't know if oranges will work. I feel like that might I might be pushing it. Um, hmm. You know, like yay currants in this grass. Yay oh, currants. That's oh, that's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And um, do we know if there's any sugar in the crust? Yes. Oh, did I forget to say about the sugar? I poured it in. I probably didn't say it. Yes, there was. Let me see if I have a memory. No, I don't. One tablespoon, one tablespoon of sugar in the crust. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty simple crust, which is another reason why I like using it because you know it's gonna work. Um, so yeah, it works for tarts with um, apples, and it also works with chicken if you're just throwing the chicken in there raw. You won't have leakage. It's great. It's a very sturdy pastry, um, and very different than a. Uh, cold water pastry. So there's the hot water pastry and sort of a cold water pastry um, that you can use. Cold water pastry, you use cold water, cold butter, and you crinkle together your butter um, and your flour to mix it in that way. Whereas with the hot water pastry, it's really durable and malleable. Um, and that's using the hot butter and pouring it in. And you, you want to work with it while it's hot. Um, so that way you're able to move it around because then it will solidify basically when it becomes too cold which is why i was trying to work it and roll that out fast as i could um oh here we go we're starting to get some rubbery-ish consistency and you can also start to hear we got some little bubbles which you guys can't see i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pour this out that's a bad idea um little bits of bubbles and some sizzling and that's the point that you want. I'm just gonna stir for a Yeah, it smells very boozy. Yeah, the, the the smell gets far more. Yeah, we get some bubbles. More boozy the more you're cooking it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, it has a very strong smell. The smell soon is gonna be overcome by the amount of cinnamon I'm about to put in this because I love cinnamon and apples. I mean, I don't think there's a way to go wrong with cinnamon and apples. All right. Yeah, I just gotta, if you like more crunchy apples, you can take it out sooner. And if you want them to be mushy, you can go ahead and continue cooking. But I'm gonna take these off right now because they're feeling pretty good. 
All right, so I'm gonna move back to my other station. I'm really having Julie get her steps in. She's just going back and forth and back and forth. Um, let's turn this off. Got that sizzle. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Let's come to the side. And you're gonna strain all of that Madeira out. I have now figured out something to do with the Madeira that you have left over. I feel like you could try and make it into some sort of sauce to put over top of it later, but yeah, that, that's up to you. I am not a sauce making kind of person. I just drizzle caramel over top of this, um, but we'll talk about that later at the end. Oh, hold on. Now I got it. So I'm going to scoop over here, another bowl. I don't know why I put that down. I need it. There we go. All right. Back down there. All right. So now we have our berry. I see those. They've sort of changed color a bit, they're a little more goldeny. I don't want to say brown, but slightly brown gold. Um, and then you get your spices. So I have those right here and I'll take out my measurements too. So that way I can give you guys all those measurements. We have, because I'm bad at memory, um, two teaspoons of sugar right here and then one teaspoon of cinnamon and then a half teaspoon of ginger. And you're just gonna wanna pour that all in there and mix it until it's all of your apples are completely coated. Do not want any of them missing. Hmm. Did anyone go apple picking this year? I didn't get to go out. Any apple pickers? I have an apple picking outfit. I wore overalls. No takers, no apple pickers? Come on, guys. Lots of smiles. Lots of smiles. Okay, fine. <laughs> all right. So get, make sure those are all mixed in. So this has now, you don't really smell the sugar as much. You smell the cinnamon and the ginger. Even if there's a little ginger, it goes a long way. Um, so there we go. That looks that looks about all mixed in. Yeah, looks good to you guys. Cool. Julia Lear, but she goes every year, Russell's an Ipswich. Yes. Yes. Every year. It's very fun. And uh, Jess November is on too. She also went to Russell Orchards, but never did this year. Oh, yeah. It, it was a rough year to try and go. So I get that. Uh, your mom says she likes Honey Pot Hill and Snow Mass. Yeah, I know. I love that place too. <laughs> All right, let's get all of that. Well, there's one I can try later. I know I'm pouring this real weird because I'm just trying to show you guys. Um, all right, so just even that all up. Out, up, yep. Okay. And now it goes in the oven. It's a pretty easy one. I like it. Um, all right, so we're gonna put that in for a half hour. Also cooks real fast, which makes me really happy. Um, if you put it in for any longer, if you have a lot of extra dough, that will start to burn. So maybe put some um, clean, not clean prep, don't do that. Um, <laughs> tin foil, thank you, Julie. Um, tin foil around the edges. Um, so that way you avoid some, some burning issues on the side. I had that happen today. All right, that goes in for a half hour. Timer set. Oh, thank you, because I do not have a timer on me. Um, so yes, while that's in there, usually I clean up. Um, but so you have some choices once it comes out. I have tried it plain. It's okay plain, but it's very plain. Um, it has some good flavors. The first time I tried this, unfortunately, I dried the entire tart out. 
Um, I also Kaylin, did, before you go, somebody said they're very they're very sad to miss some apples in the bowl. We'll have to snack with those after. I did. <gasps> I did. Thank you. <laughs> I'm definitely so that's one of the things the recipe tells you that you can just eat the apples as is and put some cut dates I, they recommend putting some cut dates on top. I don't know why particularly specifically dates. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't have. I don't know why that's what they suggested. Um, but yeah, you can just have it in a bowl by itself. You kind of going to do it. Yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> It's always good to have those little mistakes. <laughs> now you made me lose my train of thought. Toppings. Huh? Toppings. Toppings, yes. So um, I think we ended up not putting any toppings on the first one I tried because I just dried it out. Everyone was very, my whole family was very nice um, <laughs> in trying it and telling me that it, looked, it, it tasted good. Um, and that was when I tried a different pastry also. Pastry tasted like bread. Everyone was very supportive. Um, <laughs> so. I like to put caramel on top of this. You can make your own caramel if you want. Um, it's not as scary as you think it is. You just have to continuously stir. If you don't continuously stir, it will burn within seconds. I've made that mistake. Um, so you just need sugar, heavy cream, and butter. And then you can make a caramel. That's it. I cheat. I have caramel in a, in a tube. I just do that. Um, <laughs> And then with some nice vanilla ice cream. So yummy. Um, so are there any other questions? Uh, somebody else suggested that they would add walnuts or nuts to this. Oh my gosh, I hadn't even thought of that. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know if it would get lost in the cinnamony flavor. I think that would add a nice crunch, which is nice. I've thought about maybe putting like a crumble on top, but I haven't thought about nuts. That's definitely. Something next time. Yeah, definitely something. Time. Is, they make a pie like this for special occasions, or you know, was was their dessert as often as like we might have dessert today? I really don't think so, especially with these spices, because these spices are expensive. In the recipe, which I actually didn't include, um, is I didn't include in, in this is saffron. Um, and that was just for coloring your pastry. But that's something that's recommended. And there's also sandalwood. So in the original recipe, it's called Saunders, um, but that's red sandalwood, which is very difficult to get. Um, it, I think it's just used for coloring in this recipe, actually. Um, I could not find any. I found saffron, tried using it, didn't work. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but the sandalwood is very interesting. It comes from South India originally, but there's been some issues with smuggling in the past. Um, and so now it's he it's heavily restricted. And it's also an endangered species now. And that's because they couldn't, when you use sandalwood, you don't just cut the tree down on the trunk. You have to take roots and all um, because the center of the tree has medical, like you can use it for medicine and the roots have the most amount of oil in it. And people use that oil for different purposes. So you need the whole entire tree, not just bits and pieces of it. Um, so it has, um, it's actually on the endangered list. So any other questions? Yeah. Grab my choo-choo. Okay. Let me make sure I didn't miss any hits. Got all the hits. I like to peel the apples before I start doing the pastry, like you guys saw. Do whatever works best for you. Again, all of these measurements are not mandatory. Um, go with what feels best for you. Um, it took me two tries to try and make that pastry because I split the recipe in half because from when I made the baked chicken in winter, because that included a lid and I didn't want to make extra pastry. Um, so fiddling with those numbers was very interesting. I ended up with it being, it was too sticky. There was too, first there was too much um, flour, then I added too much butter. And so it was just sticking to my table. Not fun, um, <laughs> but it seems to have worked out pretty well now. But if you find a better way to do it, let me know. And if you guys try out this tart, definitely let me know. Yes, <laughs> I'm just like trying to think. Yes, it, it would have because you wanted to get 
Yeah, so in your oven. Yeah. I, I don't have any other sort of ex explanation on them. Yes. No other questions. All right. So I'd like to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you guys are able to join us next month, April 21st. Um, we're going to start doing some tea, having some tea time related um, recipes. And so I really hope you guys join us for that. All right. Happy spring. <laughs>